Good morning and welcome to New Day's third annual Pride Special. We have a bunch of amazing guests with us this morning as we celebrate our LGBTQ community. It's going to be a very colorful hour. Oh, oh. New Day starts now. Now, from the Virginia Mason Franciscan Health Studio at King 5, this is New Day Northwest with Amity and Tracy. Good morning, my friends, and welcome to New Day Northwest. This is our show's third annual Pride special, and our whole entire staff is so excited to bring this show to you. We're going to be covering quite a bit of ground here, from queer history to supporting LGBTQ businesses and youth. Stylist Darcy Camden has tips on non-binary fashion, and we're going to talk with the Seattle Thunderbirds' only gay player. And of course, today is also Juneteenth, also known as Freedom Day, which makes this day even more special. And that brings me to our first guest this morning. She was the very first winner of RuPaul's Drag Race back in 2009. And now she's in town today with a show called Nubia and a special Juneteenth celebration tonight at the Moore Theater. And we are thrilled to welcome Bibi Zahara Benet to the show. Oh my show. gosh, I'm so excited. I Thank am, you for having me. It is <laughs> such a great honor to have you here, especially so early in the day. Oh my, it's early. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I was like, what? By the way, you look stunning for oh. it being that early. <laughs> Love you. Stop when you're finished, like, but not I can before. Give that skirt. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Mama's skirt. Mama's rainbow skirt. Um, so tell us what <clears throat> Nubia is all about and how you created it. Oh my gosh, Nubia, I am so excited about the show and being in Seattle. Um, so Nubia, it came about because when I looked at a lot of like tours and shows that have been happening mm -hmm. around. Um, I never saw like a lot of like the talent and diversity represented in those shows. Right. So I thought it was very important for us to create space where we can bring people together to yes. come celebrate black excellence, black glamour, black opulence, everything black. And I like to say that that space is for all. I like to say it's by us, but for all. And we just, you know, I just want, we just want amazing folks to just come and have a good old time and celebrate with us. And Seattle. Seattle. Uh, <laughs> Seattle. I love Seattle. When I won Drag Race and I was traveling, this was one, and I don't say this to be like, just, this is one of the cities that has always shown me so much love and shown the other girls like of color so much love. And so it was just so important for us to come here and be able to like, just do the show here and celebrate. That makes Jinky. us so proud. That makes us so proud of yeah. our city right now. That is so wonderful. So hope everybody shows up and shows <laughs> yes, out. You come know, on. that's what we're waiting. Well, <laughs> and I have to say it's pretty awesome that Nubia is happening the same day as Juneteenth. It is, isn't it? Yes. Isn't it? It's all, and it's like when when we talk about the culture and we mm -hmm. talk about what's been happening, I mean, Nubia and Juneteenth, it just makes sense together because it's still, we're still having the same kind of conversations and yeah. also those things do change, we'll still be having those same kind of conversations. And so bringing people together and seeing what we're all about is what's most important in a very loving way. Because you know? it does seem like there are parallels between Pride and Juneteenth and, and, that, and that idea of freedom. And to be seen. And to be seen. And to create space mm -hmm. where you belong. Where you belong. Yeah. And you're, it's okay. And, and everyone is welcome. And I think, I think it's just so important, especially when you when you think back on on the evolution of things. And I, RuPaul's Drag Race yeah. has been such an important piece mm -hmm. of, of learning. And you were the very first winner. Don't say that. It makes me feel so old. I know. <laughs> wait, we're not. Oh, wait a minute. I'm barely legal. Okay. Isn't that yesterday? I'm barely legal. <laughs> I mean, how did it impact your life? Oh my gosh. You know, I, I'm humbled. I'm mm -hmm. just humbled by it. And just to be able to see the fact that I was the very first one to start the journey mm -hmm. and, and see how far it has come, where it's become so successful and we're part of the pop culture. Yeah. And we, we, you know, we're, people are having conversations about our artistry. People are paying thousands and thousands of dollars for our artistry, AKA Nubia, yeah. you know? And I'm just so just humbled that I was able to like start that, uh, start this uh, adventure. That, we, it's just, that you get to experience that, now. I know, and cannot wait. Can I ask how you first got into drag? Oh, 
<laughs> well, first of all, I'm not from this country. I'm from Cameroon, mm -hmm. uh, West Africa. But when I moved, to, I actually moved to Minnesota. And uh, one of my friends was like, hey, let me take you to a drag show. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what drag was. I was like, well, that's a drag show. Mm -hmm. So she takes me to this this drag bar and I'm sitting there and all of a sudden the curtains open and I see all this amazing beautiful entertainers coming out and just looking stunning and I'm telling you, my mouth was on the floor yes. like it dropped and I was like oh my gosh this is what I'm supposed to be doing because as a child I had always been mm -hmm. into the arts music mm -hmm. dance performance fashion all of that and I wasn't sure how what form that would take and so just seeing those entertainers just it was the puzzles just came together and yeah. from there that's you know story is that's a story you know that's just look, you at me now, look at me now look at me now <laughs> What would you say to other people who are looking to get into drag or just even entertainment in general? It is, it's kind of scary to take that step. It is. I think I, I get asked that question a lot. I think the big thing for me is you have to answer your why. Why do you want to do it? You know, yeah. because I, it, it's the glamour is just ten percent of everything else. Yes. People come and see, they see us and see what we do, and they're like, "Oh my gosh!" You know, no, no, <laughs> it takes a lot, and yeah. it, it would it would test you. So you have to answer your why because your why is really going to give you a direction of how to move forward. And EK, hey, if your why is I just want to have fun, then. You would have fun if your wife, I want to make some money, then you're going to gear up yourself to how you make money. Okay. So I would say you have to answer your why because your why would guide you. I think that's the best advice ever. I'm gonna have I'm gonna write that. <laughs> but you, down. even you, you know, know what is your why? <laughs> why are you doing well, this? Well, you know, it, it, you're right. You know, when people look out and they see, oh, you must have so much fun every day you're on the TV. No, you have no idea that this is 10% of my day. The rest exactly. of it is writing or, or doing these things. And so it is true, your why is so important. How are you celebrating Pride this year? Oh, making money. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my why. Sure, that's my why, making money. No, I'm just like, so excited that I get to like just travel and meet people mm -hmm. and and just uh, you know empower you know and bring some joy. That's what we're all about is bringing joy yeah. to people and just showing them some life and light. And I just I'm excited that we get to do this. And June is amazing because it's Pride Month, but I say we need to do this every month, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just not just Pride for everybody. Yeah. You know, it's necessary. Tell me before I let you go about some of the other queens in the show. Oh, I'm very excited. I mean, we are with like the top top girls of color. We have Shea Kule, we have Lala Ree, Evie Oddly, we have Mo Hart, we have Raj O'Hara, winners, and just just successful, successful black artists. And I'm telling you, we are burning the stage tonight. I love it. And I want everybody to just come. I want Seattle, I want to see the Seattle love that I get all the time that I get here. So hopefully everybody shows up because it's a show for all, for all. For all, you hear that? It's for it all. is time to go. Not and just I, black people. I can't wait. What a per I can't think of a better thing to do tonight to, to celebrate. And I cannot wait to see. I mean, you are absolute light here. Just early this morning sharing your, your gifts with us today, but I cannot wait to see everyone on the Thank stage you. tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, and you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Oh. Phoebe is going to be <laughs> staying with us for a round of Hot Topics yes. at the end of the show, along with producer Joseph, so that will be so much fun. Meantime, as our Pride special continues this morning, we are going to turn our attention to the fashion industry, which is still a very gendered space. Later in the show, stylist Darcy Camden shows us non-binary and gender-neutral looks that you can find now in stores and online. But up next, I'm talking with a Seattle author about his new book that takes a look at queer history and representation in the media. We'll be right back. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at New Day in W. Welcome back to our Pride special on New Day Northwest. We just wanted to take a moment and thank the Red Balloon Company for these beautiful Pride balloon towers. They're so incredible and just bring so much excitement to the studio. All right, now to our next guest. Throughout modern history, queer people have been represented in the media in all sorts of ways, sometimes in ways you might not even have known. In his new book, Hi Honey, I'm Homo, author Matt Baum takes a closer look at sitcoms and specials and the basic queering 
of American culture. Matt joins me now. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me. So let's talk about this. What inspired you to write a book on this topic? Well, the short answer is I just love television. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yep, yep. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm hanging out with my friends when mm -hmm. I'm watching The Golden Girls or Cheers or Will yes. and Grace or whatever. But as I started to watch more television over the years, I could see there's this story that's being told that one show picks up and then another one picks it up and another over the years. And I recognize from all the activism that I've done in my life yeah. for queer liberation that it, the story of LGBTQ people's lives are playing out on sitcoms over the decades. And we've seen it, but we, like you said, may not have known it. So let's go through some of the best queer moments in sitcom history. We'll, talk, we'll start with um, Beverly LaSalle and All in the Family. Just an amazing character. This is at a time when you just did not see queer people on television. Mm -hmm. Certainly not in, um, in in a good context. Right. You know. But then uh, All in the Family, Norman Lear's show, uh, puts this character on the air who is, she has depth, she has heart, mm -hmm. the characters grow to love her. Yeah. It's this wonderful depiction. And for a lot of viewers, the first queer per person, openly queer person, they realized that they had ever seen. Right, and, and made them human. Yeah. And, and loved. and and. Let's move on to Jody on Soap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Soap was going to be such a controversial show before it even aired. Mm -hmm. uh, when queer people heard that there was going to be a gay character, they were up in arms. When conservatives heard about that, they were up in arms from the other direction. <laughs> wow. And so finally the show airs and we see Billy Crystal, then a relatively unknown comedian, right. playing a character with a lot of depth and again, heart. And he becomes uh, a, a parent, a, a queer person co-parenting uh, a, a child. It's incredible when you talk about this narrative throughout. One of my favorite moments on television is something that you mentioned in the book. It's on Golden Girls when Sophia, the mm -hmm. grandmother, the, and I think I love it because I also had a Sicilian grandmother. Um, she explains gay marriage so beautifully. Yeah, and Estelle Getty, the actress, was such a huge ally in her life. Mm -hmm. um, this episode of the Golden Girls tackles uh, same-sex marriage at a time when very few people were even thinking about that as an yeah. issue. Mm -hmm. And she makes it make sense by just saying to somebody, saying to Blanche, who doesn't understand it, well, why did you get married? And Blanche realizes that we all just want someone to grow old with and everyone should have that choice, It's yeah. that chance. It's a beautiful sentiment. It was a beautiful sentiment. And, and Golden Girls actually did a lot when it came to LGBTQ, everything. Yeah. They, they spoke about it a lot. They spoke about a lot of things, which I thought was really so important for the day. It was very ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. One moment that I think everyone remembers is the moment that Ellen came out on her yeah. show. Yeah, boy, if you were alive back then, you just remember where you were. Mm -hmm. Such a historic moment. I was sitting at home, I was home alone, and when she said those words, I'm gay, I remember standing up and sitting down, standing up and sitting, like I just, I flew out of my chair. It was so exciting. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. That really helped me come out, because um, I was a teenager when that happened. Yeah. I didn't know how to say those words, and seeing someone on TV do it made me say, okay, Maybe I can do this. Maybe it'll go like this for me. It's so funny because it happened, what, 20 years ago? Um, but I still have the chills when I remember it as well. Um, later, a couple years later, Will and Grace is on TV, and there's the first same-sex kiss that I think a lot of people had ever seen. Yeah, yeah. And what's so funny is the episode of Will and Grace with the kiss mm -hmm. is sort of a meta episode where the characters are angry at the on show NBC, the in world NBC, mm -hmm. which had chickened out from showing a kiss, something that had happened in real life many, many times. Yep. And so they go to NBC to complain uh, and eventually stage a sort of like impromptu protest where they get a kiss on the NBC of the, of the world and that means the <laughs> NBC of our lives as well. Right, yeah. it's so, that was very deep. Yeah. Um, you say that there was also queer subtext hidden in plain sight in shows like Bewitched. Please, I, I I, that is what I went, really? Tell me yeah. more. <laughs> yeah, you might not think so, because Bewitched is a show about a, you know, a man a and a woman. A housewife yeah. who is a witch mm -hmm. who has to hide her true self for her husband. Yeah, it's a show about keeping secrets, blending in in the suburbs. And an early episode of that show is about the witches trying to decide, should we come out and tell people we're witches? Maybe it's not safe for us to do that. Mm. That's happening at the same time as the first queer protests, first public queer protests in American history. Really? See, so, yeah. you know, I never made that connection. Of course it was, you know, this is what we were watching on Nick at Night. Mm -hmm. But it is important to see that. And I always did feel that it did bother me that, that she had to hide who she was mm. for so long. But then she had a daughter who was also like that. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was going to be Jodie Foster was going to play that character. No so. kidding. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right. Why is comedy a particularly effective way to counteract bigotry and ignorance? 
Yeah, so it's like an intravenous. That's something that Norman Lear has said. He very kindly spoke to me for my book about the making of some of his groundbreaking shows. Wow. And he describes comedy as an intravenous that um, gets a message into an audience when they might not be receptive to it directly. But yeah. if you're laughing, you're having a good time, you're hanging out with your friends, Edith and Archie, or the Golden Girls, mm -hmm. or Will and Grace, or whoever, it feels like you're just spending time with people you like, laughing, and that really smooths over new ideas, meeting new people, considering people, you know, as whole people rather than the, the bigotry or the lies or the intolerant things that you might have heard somewhere else. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Uh, Hi, Honey, I'm Homo is the book. Go check it out right now because it is truly a delightful read and will probably inspire your watch list as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, our Pride special continues next with a chat about how to be more intentional with your dollars. The Intentionalist is highlighting local businesses owned by queer black members of our community. Stay with us. Welcome back to New Day Northwest. Showing your support for the LGBTQ community also extends to where and how we shop. Now here to share a few of her favorite small business owners and show off their products is Laura Kleiss from The Intentionalist. Welcome back, Laura. Thanks so much for having me. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. We were so excited because you've actually gathered these great items from the LGBT community. LGBTQ community, including our black queer friends. Yes. Because along with celebrating Pride this month, today is Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth. So let's talk about some of the incredible things that you've shown us. First of all, did you cut your hair? In fact, I did. Wow. And I want to <laughs> shout out Rock Steady Salon. It's a wonderful queer black woman owned salon in Ballard. Oh, wow. And I love what she does with this. She works with all textures, all types. All are welcome. Okay, that is good to know because my daughter has very curly hair, mine is, and so it's nice to know someone who can work with all types of hair because everybody's hair is different. Absolutely. Moving right along. Okay. This here is Footprint Wine Tap, Ooh. owned by Ken Dillon. It's a gay, black-owned business in Seattle's Capitol Hill neighborhood. Okay. And what's really innovative is that they're showcasing sustainable wines, low intervention wines on tap. I was gonna say, this is a bottle of wine in a growler. My brain's not quite competing, computing. So let's try it. Oh my gosh, right. it smells delicious. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. Ooh, that's delicious. And that's their red. Oh, that's delicious. Okay, next up we have pink and blue sparkles. Um, this is a tea. Friday, Friday afternoon tea has a series of what they call their communities. I love Sorry, they're it. charities. They're charities. They're charities that celebrate community and each of these is supporting nonprofit organizations, benefiting and providing critical services for queer and trans youth. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. So this is the Free to Be Me tea. Show love, support, and human rights. I love this. Okay, next we have the Pride Cake, which is, I mean, look at this, it's beautiful. So that's courtesy of the Flora Bakehouse in Beacon Hill, owned by Nat Stratton Clark. All right, well, if I have to try a piece, would you like a, a fork Absolutely. as well? Absolutely. All right, well, you just have to try and get go. in here. Get on in there. I. This cake is beautiful, all right. Mm-hmm. 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 Flora Bakehouse knows what's up. That is delicious. It's like the lemon in there. Oh, that is good. And we have more treats right here. We've got some cookies. Um, and I'm gonna let you pronounce the name because I know I will I will mangle it if I do. So Shikarina Pastries, located in the Central District, owned by Hannah Johannes, mm. is a queer black woman-owned zero waste bakery. Zero waste? And these are her pride cookies. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of effort that goes into hand dyeing with natural dyes, of mm -hmm. course, all of the dough, and then finishing it off with those colorful pride sprinkles. Can I just tell you, this cookie right here tastes like your childhood. You know, it's... Vanilla cookie with oh. white chocolate chunks. Okay, we have only one minute left, so I want to talk to you about how you were mentioning to me earlier how Receipts matter, you have to save your receipts. Why is that? Exactly, so in collaboration with all of Seattle's professional sports teams, mm -hmm. yeah. this month, folks can upload receipts from any of these and actually any queer-owned business to intentionalist.com for the chance to win prizes. Stop when you're finished. And 
along those lines, I wanted to highlight that our guest artist this month is a queer trans artist of color named Yes Segura, founder of Smash the Box, and they're known for their incredible map inspired artwork. I love maps. I love map artwork. I've seen this before and this is absolutely beautiful work. And this is one of the prizes. I guess we'll make it one. No, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. No, this is amazing. Such beautiful things. Thank you so much for bringing all these things here and helping us be more intentional with the way we support everyone. Thank you and let's spend with pride. Spend with pride, I love it. All right, so it is important to support the business community, but it's also important to support LGBTQ youth. Up next, I'm gonna head to the Lambert House Youth Center up on Seattle's Capitol Hill and see why they're a key part of the community. Also ahead, we are celebrating Pride with a fashion show featuring models who identify as non-binary and showing off gender non-conforming fashions. Stay with us. This is New Day Northwest. And welcome back to our New Day Pride special. You know, one portion of the LGBTQ community that definitely needs support are young people. I recently got a chance to visit a very special youth center that's making a huge impact. Welcome to the Lambert House on Seattle's Capitol Hill. They say this is a place where life for LGBTQ youth gets better. Let's go check it out. Here we are in the living room of the Lambert House, and it has such a calm and welcoming vibe, complete with sparkly unicorn stuffy. I'm here with Brandon. <laughs> Brandon, tell us, what is Lambert House? Lambert House is a community center for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning youth here headquartered in Seattle. But we serve youth from across King County, North Pierce County, South Snohomish, and online from across the country. When we talk about serving, what services do you offer? We offer a variety of different kinds of services. We have support groups that are facilitated by adults with a variety of different affinities or themes. Mm -hmm. So youth can get together who share those affinities or identities, support each other, talk about things that are important to them. We also have this drop-in space, mm -hmm. which is a great space for youth to come and hang out and make friends and play games. It really does have that feeling of a place of belonging. Why are these services needed? 93% of youth who come to Lambert House still to this day tell us their number one need and their number one goal is to make friends. Who can come here? Like, what are the ages that you welcome? Our age range is uh, from 10 until 22 years old. Okay, all right. Let's talk about the climate that queer people are facing right now. Yeah, so um, to me, it feels pretty mixed. I mean, things mm -hmm. have gotten better over time, especially here in the Seattle area, and things are really tough still, depending on where youth live in the yeah. country. I mean, there are a lot of states that are introducing anti-LGBTQ laws, and many of them target LGBTQ youth specifically. Yeah, Pride is a time to celebrate what we as a community have accomplished what our allies have helped us accomplish. And it's also a time to remember that there is more that needs to be done here and elsewhere. We're not done with the work. Yeah. So it's a time to have fun. It's also a time to recommit to the work we need to do. Brenna, what would you say to people who would think, oh, these kids are just going through a phase or they don't really know their true identity yet? I would say that human adolescence is a time where we're all figuring out a lot of things about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Human adolescence goes from about puberty through 25 or 26 to parents or others who think that it could possibly be a phase, but what if it's not? Is it worth risking your child's anxiety, depression, and possibly suicide over treating it like it's just a phase? Yeah. All right. Well, I understand that there are many members of the Lambert House, both yes. alumni and still active that are committing to the work. And let's go, I'm gonna go meet them now. This is the library at the Lambert House, which is filled with tons of LGBTQIA plus books. And I'm joined now by Amy and Tong, the a volunteer and mm -hmm. former program participant. And, mm -hmm. and Tong, you are a current program participant. Amy, first, I have to ask, mm -hmm. how did you get involved in the Lambert House? Yeah, um, I was just looking to find other queer friends. I wanted to find a community that I wasn't necessarily finding at my high school, so I just Googled um, youth centers and Lambert House came up and I went for four years until I aged out and it's been an amazing experience. And now you're giving back as a volunteer. Mm -hmm. 
Tong, what have your experiences been like? You've been a Lambert House youth for uh, eight years now, right? Yeah, eight years. And your experiences, tell me, how have they affected your life? I came into Lambert House severely depressed and fairly suicidal. Oh my goodness. Um, I actually was using Lambert House as a way of saying that there is a place that I belong on this planet mm -hmm. as a way of saying that I shouldn't commit suicide and it worked out and I'm still here because of that. Lambert House has a lot of different kinds of people from a different from all different walks of life. Um, it's a place where people gather and feel comfortable being themselves when they aren't at all anywhere else. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a place where we accept you for whoever you are. And a big thank you to the Lambert House for inviting us in. They do such wonderful work there. Well, the fashion industry, it's still very gendered. Male and female, a construct that leaves some people feeling unseen. Stylist Darcy Camden is here to celebrate non-binary and gender non-conforming fashion. And now, Darcy, I have to say, when it comes to this space in fashion, like non-binary and gender non-conforming. This is not new to you as a stylist. No, I've been a stylist for going on 20 years, almost 20 years now. So I have hundreds of clients over the last decade plus mm -hmm. who reach out because they really feel unseen in the retail landscape mm -hmm. and don't know how to start putting a wardrobe together. Right. And so I've had the real joy of helping so many cool people do that and as a stylist the moment that I live for is putting someone in an outfit and they look in the mirror and they go oh there I am and I think that's something we can all relate to wanting in our lives yeah and so um, I'm really excited to share some of my tips and resources that I point people to this was what was so great for me when we had this this whole segment came from a conversation we had in my car as we were driving somewhere and I still get the chills when you say I look at myself in the mirror and say, there I am. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think all your tips are really important, but you also have a lot of great looks you've put together for yeah. us. And so let's get started right away. So let's look at the looks from Kieran Finch. Did I say that right? Kieran yes. Finch? So we're going to welcome our first group of models showing looks from one of my favorite brands, Kieran Finch. And I have to say, when I tell some of my clients about this website mm -hmm. that features non-binary fashion, they often tell me like, oh, thank you, thank you. I now no longer need to hire you because everything <laughs> I Wait, could you want just... for weekend work and yes. special occasion is all here. You just lost yourself a job because of Kieran so, Fish? But it's so great. So yes. everyone check it out. I, we're talking like, especially for summertime, these cool like short sets, mm -hmm. love the prints, lots of personality, also great basics, shorts, pants, Cool bomber jacket. Avery's I, wearing that, okay. the coolest bomber jacket that, wait for it. Oh, stop when you are finished. reversible. And a, something else I really love about this brand, dedicated to sustainability and extending the life cycle of their clothing. And so, if you grow out of something, if you don't wear it, if you oh. want to sell it back to the company, they will give you credit, as well as you can find at KarenFinch.com, previously owned garments okay. for less expensive. I am, so I just really, I think more brands should be thinking about that. I think they should and be thinking offering about that, And I think it's really, really cool. So all of Love our models this. said super, super comfortable, lightweight, great for summer, fits well. Love it. I'm getting that flamingo outfit for That's sure. That's so cool. All it's, right, thanks to all of you fabulous looking people. Our, our next looks are from a company called Outplay. Shopoutplay.com is what you have written on my card here. So what is out? Oh, this is a great outfit. Very comfortable. Such a great resource. Shopoutplay.com mm -hmm. for non-binary activewear okay. and swimwear. So again, Heading into summer, this is the kind of thing that we want. We're talking rash guards. We're talking compression mm -hmm. tanks. We're talking board shorts, rash guards, leggings, hoodies, all the great stuff that is you Michael want. Is Michael wearing a rash guard right here yes. underneath? Yeah, ah, which would be something okay. for SPF protection, yes. like at the beach. So really awesome. I love going to a website where there's not men's section, mm -hmm. women's section. It's just all, everything is for everybody. I love it. Yep. That's fantastic. This is, these are some of the other photos from this website as well. Really yeah. Really great. Really, Thank you, really Michael. Cool. You look awesome in that rash yeah. guard. It's really good.
All right, so our next is from Suit Shop. Now, I love a suit. I do, too. I, you rock a suit like I've I never seen someone rock a suit. I love a suit. It's mm. one of my favorite things to wear. And I've always wanted a three-piece suit like this one right here. And I'm just thinking about everyone heading into, like, the height of wedding season, planning a wedding. Maybe you want your entire wedding party to be in a suit. Yep. Maybe you're a guest at a wedding, you're officiating a wedding, and you're looking for a really awesome, affordable suit to own. Thank not you. Not necessarily rent. So, suit shop. So, with suit shop. Suit shop. Okay, I am going yes. here because when my cousin and her wife got married, yes. they both wore white dresses and wanted me in a suit, and he couldn't find one anywhere back in 2004. I have a lot of people messaging me saying, my best man is a woman, or mm -hmm. I want to wear a suit in my sister's wedding, and I don't know where yep. to go. Suit, suit shop. shop. It's about two to three hundred dollars for an entire suit set and there's men's women's and for everyone which really lets you I mean, very easily mix and match cross pollinate um love it love it tuxedos great suiting yes and then it is amazing Je affordable genie and sheree right you look awesome Bring in it. Bring in the power suit to the love studio. Love an Oxford. Love a really yes. great, comfortable Oxford shoe with a suit. Thank you so much to both of you. Our next is a, it's a, it's a gender mashup mm -hmm. that you created from Nordstrom Rack. I did. And there are a lot of cool tips that come along with this particular look. Tell Nordstrom me Rack more. is specifically, and I'm going to even say the Northgate Nordstrom yes. Rack. This is an That's unsponsored recommendation. But that is, I think, the best place to try to do what I call a gender mashup outfit, okay. where you're taking some item from women, some item from men, mm -hmm. and you're kind of putting together a look that incorporates everything, including shoes. Yes. Because they have women's shoes up to size 13, mm -hmm. and you can really get the whole lay of the land, and you can... There's one fitting room area, so you don't have to decide, am I going to men's, am I going mm -hmm. to women's? And you can really just play. So I like to do a lap around, okay. get, really think, okay, there's jeans here, there's blazers here. Mm -hmm. I say get five things that you wanna try that spark your interest. If you think, ooh, I wonder how that would look on me, you're putting it in your cart. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna get about five things to go with the first five, because you wanna make an outfit. Ah. Maybe there's a really cool shirt, so you need a bottom to go with it. So when you're in the fitting room, you're evaluating an entire outfit. Okay. Then you wanna look for gender dupes, where you might get the women's version and the men's version, because the goal is to figure out, okay, which one just what fits me better? For you? Which one do I like better? I love it. Thank you so yeah. much for all these wonderful ideas. Thank you to Darcy. We're gonna have some links to the looks that we showed you today on our website, so you don't have to do any shopping. We'll just send you right there. You'll also find more websites, <laughs> resources from Darcy specifically on general, gender neutral fashion. All right. Celebrating pride in the world of sports, our conversation with Seattle Thunderbirds defender Luke Prokop after this. Welcome back to the show. You know, coming out takes a lot of courage, especially when you're among the first. Luke Prokop is a trailblazer in the world of hockey. Not only did he just win a WHL championship with the Seattle Thunderbirds, he's also the first openly gay player under an NHL contract. Luke was drafted by the Nashville Predators in 2019. A year later, he came out to the world in a social media post. Luke spoke to our Terry Holloman about this journey. I remember when I came out to my agents, um, I met with them for lunch kind of one afternoon and they sort of presented me with two options of going public um, or just keeping it inside my, my circle of friends and family and just telling who I wanted to. Um, but I was, it was always something I wanted to do, um, come out publicly. I just wanted to help young kids like me feel like that they could play the sport they love without having to think um, about their sexuality. Um, obviously, we had to let, you know, like the NHL know beforehand, Nashville beforehand, um, a few other organizations. But uh, it, was, it was a pretty easy decision for me to want to come out publicly. You spoke about having to inform the NHL and a lot of other people. So what are some of the other things you had to take into consideration with letting the public know? Since no one had done it before in the NHL, um, how it would be, how it would be perceived, if it would be taken positively, negatively, that was something that I kind of had to deal with for a couple months. And 
I finally got to the point where I just didn't really care what anyone else thought about it anymore. Um, I wanted to live my life the way I wanted to, not a life somebody else pictured for me. So um, that took a that took a while. Um, and then having those conversations with Nashville and the NHL really gave me the little extra boost of confidence that I needed that I knew that it was going to be the right decision to do. What kind of response have you been getting from the public, from the fans? Yeah, it's been extremely positive. Um, I couldn't have couldn't have asked for a better response um especially on the day of i know i was really nervous i didn't i couldn't eat that day really um but just seeing how much love and support i got from inside and outside the hockey community was was unbelievable um and still to this day uh, i get messages from fans and i mean not even hockey fans but you know all over the world um you know my story reached a lot of people which was one of my goals um you know if i wanted if i could only reach one person and um, they got into the game of hockey because of because they felt comfortable because of something I did, then, you know, I, I did my job. Now, we've come a long way in the last couple of decades, but there's still a long way for us to go. What do you think needs to change before more athletes can feel comfortable about coming out? Um, I mean, with everything that has been happening in sports, the, you know, last year, last two years, um, I don't blame athletes for not wanting to come out. It's a long journey and everyone's is different. Um, I mean, I didn't realize it before I came up, but the community is so accepting and so loving. It's almost like you have another family, you know, they'll, they'll do anything for you. And I've witnessed it firsthand. Um, but continuing to have conversations about language. And um, I think that's really important, especially for, for younger people um, and not just throwing, you know, incidents under the rug Um you know, if, if a player says a homophobic slur on the ice or, you know, kind of incidents like that, sometimes I feel like they just get thrown under the rug. Um, and that's happened a lot in the past. So making sure that those issues are, are brought to light and, you know, they continue to be. You're taking part in the Seattle Pride Classic, which is the largest pride hockey tournament in the country. What does it mean to you to be a part of an event like this? Really special, um, you know, this year it kind of worked out perfectly because my season went so long. It was just the weekend after, um, but being being there this year and um, just hearing all all everyone's different stories um, and meeting so many new folks and um, it was just kind of an awesome group to be around. Everyone was so elated to be there playing in, in a in a tournament that they felt comfortable being in. Um, and yeah, I mean, I can't wait to play it again next year. Hopefully I get the invite back. But yeah, it was it was an unbelievable tournament and I couldn't thank the organizers enough for inviting me and putting it on. Um, I was extremely impressed with how it was ran. You've accomplished so much already in your 21 years of life on and off the ice. What can we expect next from Luke? Um, well, I've, I've aged out of junior hockey now, so it's it's on to the pros, um, kind of wherever that might be within the Nashville organization. So I'm just going to train hard this summer, uh, kind of I'll go to Nashville in September for training camp and just try to put my best foot forward. I'm not too sure what exactly my future holds, but uh, I'm really excited for it. And we're excited for you, Luke. Well, our Pride special continues as we finish this hour with a spicy round of hot topics. Phoebe is back along with producer Joseph, so you better stay with us. Hi, everyone. I'm Jinx Monsoon, and I want to wish a very happy Pride Month to Seattle. Celebrate proudly and unapologetically. <laughs> And thanks to Jinx for that very special message. She was such a fun interview earlier this month. You can check it out online. Well, you know what is also fun? My Hot Topics panel this morning. Back with me on the couch is Phoebe Sahara Benet, along with my executive producer, Joseph. Good morning. Um, I am so delighted to have you all here, and I'm glad that we were having this show specifically today because there's no denying that the political climate right now is, is more tense than mm -hmm. I, yes. I feel like in pride season of years past. Yes, I agree. Am I not the only one who feels that way? No. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Are, are, does it make <coughs> you decide to do anything differently this year? I know for me, I feel like every June, like you go to a bunch of pride parties, mm -hmm. like that's very typical, but this was the first year where I was not the one to wait around to go to one. I was deciding to have one 
myself. Like oh, I wow. hosted one for the yeah. first time ever yeah. in my life. I had all my yeah. friends come over. And it was just really interesting to, you know, there's all my friends, um, that I wanted to do a toast to like hold space for us this mm -hmm. year specifically because I mm -hmm. do feel like this year does feel different than previous years. And I think it's important that we all kind of recognize that. Yeah. You know, the fight is still going. Mm -hmm. I think for us, oh, it's, I could speak for me just being an artist. I think I've always been very intentional mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When, when it comes to June. You yeah. know, I've never ever taken it so lightly, period. Yeah. Because I just feel like there is, when you've traveled and you've met so many people, you can still tell there's so much work to be done. Yeah. And I know this year is crazy, but last year was crazy. You know what I mean? When we talk, oh. there's just been so many things that have been happening. So you just have to stay very conscious and aware of what's happening. And I think it's important, just even us as artists and entertainers, you know, it's a privilege to do what we do. Yeah. And so with the platform that we're giving, there is responsibility that comes with that. So we we try our best, or I try my best, to make sure that we are very active in moving the movement forward. Yeah. You know? It's so important. You know what's interesting? It's, I, as I've been listening to the news over the last year or so, when you talk about this in, intense political climate, I've noticed, I feel like we're going backwards in so many ways. It's in crazy, so many isn't it? I just, I, and I, I think about it and I'm like, how is this happening? I mean, we're supposed to progress forward as human beings and as a society, and it doesn't feel like that all the time. And, and Bibi and I were talking about uh, the drag laws, and I had mentioned that as a child growing up in L.A., I went to drag shows. This is in the 80s, okay, the 1980s. Yeah, that was a different time, right? Yeah, well, a different time. It's like, even first of all, number one, drag shows are a very safe space for anybody and everybody. Yes. Just, that's just the truth. Mm -hmm. We come into those spaces and we create those spaces with love and care. That's why those spaces are there, so that everybody can come and they can feel like they belong and they feel like they can be seen and yes. they can feel like they can just have a good time without anybody getting in the way. Yeah. And you don't know how many shows I've done with kids. And I would tell, I can honestly tell you that we are mama bears when it comes to kids. <laughs> yes. That's just the truth. What We would protect these kids, yes. you know, because we know what it is growing up as children, not feeling like we belong, not feeling like anybody fitting. knows yeah. we're fitting in. Mm -hmm. So when we see kids, it's just that it just gets that soft spot for us and right. we just become so protective. So to say, and I'm not saying that I understand like not all shows are for everybody, but that's okay because right. as a parent, mm -hmm. you decide where you take your child to. Yeah. You know, so when we see these lovely parents bringing children to the shows, it's because they feel like they will be safe there yeah. and their kids will be safe mm -hmm. there. And so for you to make all these rules and regulations, you're just, it's just a distraction. No shade. No, it, <laughs> it's a distraction. It is. What and do you think? I mean, yeah. Amity was talking about that show that we went to in February, mm -hmm. and it was a daytime drag show. It was a brunch, and there was a child, a couple of kids there, I think. Yeah. And it was just a very festive environment. It, you know, felt different than a nighttime drag show, but it was still drag, and it was yeah. very fun, supportive, colorful, and diverse. And all the queens gave the child attention, but also space. Yep. And it was just, it really was, it was such a celebration. And it, it you know, I really just hope that we start to be, as you guys, kind of, as y'all said, like more intentional mm -hmm. about the mm -hmm. way we are thinking about and things. And what you were saying about you think we're going backwards, I feel like we're just growing in all directions. Yeah. I still okay, feel there's, all right, I feel that. I feel there is progress, but maybe there's backwards growth yeah. in some other areas too. But it is, I yeah. think. I think, it's hopeful. I think it's different directions, like you said. It's not even going backwards, backwards. It's everybody's just going into, and just, it's like you're following whatever that is, mm -hmm. and you're not even making up your own mind. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> but yeah, one thing that does make me happier though locally, these donuts that we got. Oh. They look so good. Look at how colorful they, they are. They are so beautiful. Thank you to Mighty O to sending these. Oh, Mighty O sent us these beautiful donuts. They're, They're vegan, too. Yeah. I'm going to apparently. take a couple of me when I'm going to rehearsal. Yes, yeah, so. please take, take, them. Them. <laughs> take them for the road. I'll, I'll I'm take, sure the girls who want a couple, I'm just saying. I mean, are they good? <laughs> They are good. Of course, they're Mighty O. Mighty O is one of my favorite mm. donut places. They make such a good jelly donut. Um, oh, wow, that is good. Um, that's a company we love. Mm -hmm. Some companies we don't love, though, oh. seem to be wavering when it comes to, uh, I don't know, support how they year. support Pride. Mm -hmm. And I remember mm -hmm. last year we were talking about how some corporations were showing too much fake support. So. Right. We've got to figure out where is that balance, you know, right? Well, I think as a community, we have to figure out what that is, mm -hmm. you know, because we take the those dollars. Like, mm -hmm. they come and they 
wave that money like hey and we're like ooh, give it to us mm -hmm. you know I think it starts from the community mm -hmm. to say no and once the community starts saying no then we're going to be able to take a stand and we on, see change happen and we're gonna see the change Absolutely. because it's just crazy to see so like when you go to the price it's just corporations mm -hmm. open corporations just throwing money because they know they're making money mm -hmm. you know and then when it's time to really support the car are they there you're not there. Yeah. You show your true colors. So we have some to of them are there, which is nice. Well, some of them, yeah, but some are not. Well, yeah. Don't get me started. Yeah. <laughs> I know a couple, a yeah. lot yes. that yes. are there just to be there, and we have to start saying no. Yeah. Yeah. Because our community is so strong, and we have the capacity of making that kind of money to support just the community ourselves. Yep. Yeah. We do. Yes. I'm. Yes. All right, we're about out of time. Thank you so much for being here. Jojo, before we let you go, though, what is your number one Pride song? Okay, sorry, we could not end this show without talking about a huge song that's like taken over the gay community, Kylie Minogue's Padam Padam. I know a lot of people out there are performing to that song out there. I know we have some video, but it's a very uh, catchy song, and that's definitely number one on my Pride playlist this year. So add that, put that, as to <laughs> ask your devices to play that for you today. Again, thank you, Vivi. Thank, thank you, you for so having me. It's an nice honor to meet you, thank by the way. You. Also, thank you for having me. to get that in there, too. And I cannot wait to see you all okay. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Nubia. And thank you, my friends, for spending this very special hour with us today. You can check our website for more of our content. You can always send us an email to share your thoughts. But most importantly, get out there and enjoy your new day. Happy Pride. We'll see you next time. Some segments of New Day Northwest are paid for by these fine sponsors.